Elm architecture is a pattern that once you learn it once, you're done. You just did it. Every Elm app is going to follow this pattern. So I'm really excited to be able to show it to you. Uh, let's pick up where we left off. In the last video, we directly translated uh, this React uh, app over here, um, over here, uh, from using JSX and, and using these functions and, and these hooks. We directly translated it to um, to Elm. And uh, what I want to do is kind of convert this. This was like a direct translation, kind of using the React mindset. What I want to do is uh, translate this to something that you might see in an Elm application out in the wild. Uh, we're going to add some type annotations. Uh, we're going to add some common uh, type conventions. And then we're going to use uh, something called an update function. And it's going to look a lot more uh, like, like Elm. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what that's going to look like. So um, this notion of an init uh, section is really common. Um, every Elm application is kind of centered around like this the state of the application. We call that the model. Um, so for our counter app, our model is just um, an integer. So we can just say model int. Um, and then if you're using uh, init, what we're saying is this init function returns a model. It's the same as saying it returns an int. We're going to use that model annotation here. And so that's what this is going to look like. Um, our update function is going to work a little bit differently. If you remember what we did in our view, uh, we had uh, click events imported from HTML events. Uh, we had those directly calling functions. And normally what you'll see, uh, we kind of hinted at this in a previous video, is that um, normally we don't use um, functions uh, here. So HTML is what we're returning, but we don't have these like int to int functions. That's not very common. Normally what you'll see is that we have a specific message type for this application. Um, so the message type is just returning values that describe the intent of what we want to do, but not necessarily the function that we want to run. So uh, what we have here is I just capitalized all these because I'm going to take all of them and we are going to define a message type, just like we defined a model type alias. We're going to make a custom type called message. Um, and we are just going to, uh, let's make this uh, on multiple lines here. Uh, we are going to define a single update function that uh, listens uh, for what message got sent. It takes in the current state of the model and returns the new state of the model. And so what you're going to find is that really um, not too much has changed uh, from what we did earlier besides uh, these getting capitalized. Oops, I don't have my shortcut. That's annoying. I had a keyboard shortcut that did that for me back in the day. Uh, but that's gone. It's all gone. So this is closer to what you'd see in an Elm application. We're going to take in that model. It's going to know what the count is. So like right now, if the count is zero and we hit plus, it's going to say count zero. Increment was the message we got. So zero plus one is one. And that's going to be the new value that it renders. So one, when we uh, run, when it plus again, count is going to come in as one this time. So one plus one is going to give us two. And so this is the actual cycle that we're going to see. So um, this overall pattern is called the Elm architecture. And you know this is the normal way of doing it because we can just directly connect those three functions that we made directly to our program. And I'm going to save this and see what I did wrong. Oh, I forgot to do a case expression. Um, I was like, that looked that, that was too easy. Um, a case expression to say, hey, let's pattern match on all the different messages we have. And if we get increment, we're going to do this. If we get decrement, we're going to do this. If we get reset, we're going to uh, return zero. And so this is, uh, this is it. This is the Elm architecture. Those are the only modifications we really needed to make uh, to make this program um, like the Elm way. So uh, that's, that's coming from kind of React, translating it, uh, and then using this init update view. It turns out uh, no matter what program uh, you're making, uh, this pattern uh, really scales. It scales very well. Uh, and then a little bit later in this section, we're going to learn about how we can uh, do more than just update the state of our app, how we can do effects, you know, HTTP requests, you know, uh, getting random numbers, and uh, you know, writing stuff to, to local storage, things like that. Uh, but for, for now, we're not doing any of that stuff. This is all we need. We just need this kind of sandbox environment. Um, so that's it. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to refresh. 
make sure that everything's working. If I you know, set this to 100 and I refresh, you'll see the count starts at 100. If I put this at zero, uh, that works too. So uh, I'm gonna make myself tiny again. Um, and everything we're seeing is just, uh, this is just Elm rendering to HTML. If you keep an eye out uh, right here, take a look at what gets rendered when I hit plus, it is actually changing the content of that P tag and it's changing it up here too. So uh, that's all it's doing. It's just kind of uh, modifying that single node. So that's it, that's the Elm architecture. Um, we added the reset, we used uh, browser sandbox, we added our annotations. Um, another thing I guess I can throw in here just for funsies is uh, a lot of the times uh, models have more than one field. So you'll see like a record being used here. So rather than just saying model is zero, you might say, you know, model is a record with a count field that's equal to zero. In which case, when I save this, you're not gonna be able to just add directly uh, to that model. What you're gonna wanna do is have the model dot count, the model dot count. And then rather than uh, setting the entire model each time, which you, you can, can say, I'm gonna return a new model like this. Um, this is valid. What you'll typically see is we're going to use the record update syntax here um, so that as we add more fields later on, we're saying take all the fields in model. Let's, uh, like, let's add some more fields like, you know, name, string, name equals Ryan. What this is doing is this is saying take the model, leave the name alone. Don't mess with that. Just modify that count property so that it is now whatever the value was before plus one. Uh, take count and make it model count minus one. Take everything about model, keep it the same, but make the count zero. So this is uh, something that you typically see. And then similarly, you can uh, do model, model.count. So this is a really common variable name that you'll see. You'll see message, msg, lowercase, to represent the different types of actions. But keep in mind that these are just conventions, right? So I could rename model across the board to state, and it would be the exact same thing. These are the names that we choose. Uh, to represent uh, our program, you know, we could rename MSG to like event, for example. This is all this is all valid. Uh, this is just uh, the conventions that the Elm community kind of centered around using message and model instead of event and state or action and state that kind of thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff. Um, so that's it. That's the Elm architecture. Uh, in the next section, we are going to uh, talk about debugging. Um, so uh, when we have a running app. How do we know if the right messages are getting sent? Um, I'm going to show you a few of the cool tools that are just built into the Elm language uh, and the Elm uh, you know, reactor and stuff that make, um, make life really awesome. Um, so that's it. Thanks.